Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great start to their weekend. You're staying healthy, strong, finding a bit of time to relax and enjoy life amidst all of this uh, chaos. Today, everyone, uh, in this class, we are going to be answering some questions for our members. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. To become a member of our channel, just click the join button next to the subscribe button. Um, and again, this class we have uh, usually once every two weeks. It's where members can ask us uh, any questions they have about the IELTS exam and about the English language. And uh, of course, I will do my best to answer those. This lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there, join our premium package for the general IELTS. Check us out at gielts.help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have loads and loads of materials, strategies, and help for you to get those high band scores. Hi, Nico. Hi, me here. Hi, Carolina. Welcome, members. Our websites look like this. This is our academic website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access, so it's definitely worth it. Uh, we're an official IELTS registration center, and uh, we are certified British Council agents. For general IELTS, it's the green background at gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button to join our uh, premium package there. Hi, Prashita. Hi, Rashika. Uh, nice of you to join us in the class. If anybody has questions, members, if I don't get to some of your questions in today's class, you can also always email them to me, uh, adrian at aehelp.com. Now for some Q&A. So uh, Q&A class right now, followed by speaking part three, where everybody will be able to chat. That's coming up in about 90 uh, minutes or so. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, no classes, okay? Usually there are no classes on those days. And I'm back on the 10th with another full week of classes. So 10th to the 13th, uh, Wednesday, starting with speaking part one. I will put this schedule up later today on our YouTube community board as uh, well, okay? All right. Okay, everyone. Uh, so... Let's do some Q&A, questions and answers, uh, and uh, I'll go through your questions one at a time. Uh, first come, first serve, so in the same order that I'm seeing them. And uh, yes, I remember, Carolina, that I said to everyone that I will tell you about my exam. Um, so I'll do that real quick, and then you can ask me some questions about my exam as well. Uh, I took an official IELTS uh, exam, an academic computer-based version of the exam uh, last week, Friday. So not this Friday that we just had, but the week before. And uh, it went well. I have my results. They're quite good. I cannot tell you the results yet because that will be in one of our live videos. Uh, sorry, not live video, but that will be in one of our HD video uh, lessons that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. So I don't want to tell you my scores. That would be a spoiler alert, um, but I did do well. Uh, so fear not. <laughs> the strategies that you're learning work very, very well. Um, I can tell you a bit about the test, though, if you're interested in it, like how it went, what were the procedures, what kind of questions they asked, what I learned about it. Um, so that's it's quite a bit of information. We will have an actual lesson video on the channel in HD about my experience during the exam. So I don't know if we want to talk about that all class, but I can definitely answer some questions. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, the exam, um, I did the uh, speaking and the um, written part on the same day. I had my speaking 
at 10.20 in the morning in downtown Budapest at the British Council Center. It's a nice building with uh, uh, modern equipment. It's a modern building. Um, and the speaking exam was with a native um, uh, British English speaker, a man roughly uh, my age. Okay. And um, it went really well. So I followed all of the same strategies that I'm teaching you uh, in these classes. Uh, of course, there are a lot of COVID uh, types of precautions and regulations uh, that they're implementing. Um, very importantly for the speaking, uh, one big tip, okay, for the speaking is definitely show up early and definitely find somebody to talk to. I did that. You're going to see that in the video. So I showed up to my speaking exam 40 minutes early and I found another candidate who was really happy that I asked them to practice a little bit. And they practiced with me and that helped me to be a little bit calmer as well as the other person. Um, of course, I was a little bit stressed because there's a lot of pressure on me to do well in this exam. Uh, so, um, so that helped me to be a bit calmer also to prove that point of being there and practicing. Um, and yes, the interview was with face mask on Carolina. So every step of the way was face mask basically from the time that i left my home all the way until I, the time i came back to my home carolina i had a face mask on okay all right um and there were other candidates there um i just picked one and the first person said sure they'll practice with me but there were other candidates so at my test center there were um, there was, uh, there were two people outside the building and there were several people inside the building. So I definitely had a few different people I could have asked to practice, um, speaking. Okay. All right. Um, if you go to your exam early, Jainil, um, so you have to get to your speaking exam at least 20 minutes before the time that it starts. Uh, because you have to register first. So they take 20 minutes for registration, okay? So that's why I said that you should go, Jainil, at least 40 minutes early, because then you will find other people who are there uh, waiting for registration, and you can ask them to go outside with you and just practice for 10 minutes, okay? So even in India, Jainil, I'm sure you can find someone who is not in the actual test center yet, and you can talk with them, okay? Yeah, exactly, Janiel. So you can do it outside of the office. That's where I did it. I did it on a park bench, basically, that was outside of the building. You're going to see that uh, in the video, okay? Um, Chabi is asking, how was the listening part? Yeah, okay, I'll tell you about that. So let's go one step at a time. Let's start with um, the listening. So how was the listening? Okay, uh, so the listening went really well. All right, so let me change out of the French English keyboard here. Um, all right, so... Uh, how was the listening? The listening went really well, uh, Chabi. At first, I actually found part one uh, to be a little bit more challenging while I was getting used to the computer screen, navigating the new keyboard and uh, the mouse. So here's a couple of interesting um, discoveries that I had dur during the uh, listening because I've never done the computer-based uh, version, the official uh, computer-based version yet. So this was my first time to do the official computer-based. I've done the paper-based, but not the computer-based. So I discovered a couple of uh, interesting uh, things, okay? So, um, uh, or caveats, I can say, uh, different points that you have to pay attention to. Okay, so listening was good here. A couple of tips, okay? So, uh, definitely practice um, using different uh, keyboards if possible, okay? I think a lot of us are really used to our own keyboard, but the keyboard that I had, 
uh, in the exam center was quite different from mine. Mine is um, elevated with bigger keys and it's tilted. And this keyboard was a little bit more flat. It's not, it wasn't tilted and the keys were much smaller. So make sure that if you have a laptop, if you have a desktop, um, really do writing on both and type on different keyboards because uh, using the equipment can be distracting. That's, I think that's the, the tip that I want to give you here. So uh, this is where the paper based is maybe a little bit better. So using unfamiliar equipment, keyboard, mouse, screen, headset, okay, um, can be a bit distracting all right so that was kind of interesting so using the keyboard that i'm provided with using the mouse that i'm provided with the screen that i'm provided with it's all new right and when you sit down in a completely new computer station it takes a minute for your brain and your hands and your mind just to kind of come together and start using that effectively okay so um the layout uh chubby is the qwerty layout okay so, uh, so definitely uh, practice with the QWERTY layout. It is a British keyboard. Um, and uh, it's very similar to the Canadian one. So there I'm kind of lucky. The Canadian keyboard is quite similar to the British. But I realize that it's not the same. So with the punctuations, there are slight differences in the British keyboard versus the American or Canadian keyboard. So be really, really uh, attentive to that. And if you're practicing for the IELTS, it might be worth getting a QWERTY keyboard or having a QWERTY keyboard set up if you don't have that, okay? Uh, because that can definitely create a situation or two in your typing, in your uh, writing section and in the listening and reading as well, okay? So good question. Yeah, it was a QWERTY keyboard. Uh, pay attention to the location of Y and Z. Those tend to change. Okay. Um, so that was good. All right. Um, another one, I said this earlier, but this is a really important tip, is uh, use the tab uh, button on the keyboard to move from one question or field to the next and not the mouse. Okay, uh, try not to look at the mouse uh, and away from the screen. Keep your eyes <laughs> on the screen at all times, okay? Um, so you don't miss answers. So um, to be perfectly honest, in part one, uh, there were actually two questions where I was staring at the mouse and I was kind of looking at what my hands were doing instead of really paying attention to the audio or the screen. And fortunately, I was able to figure out what I think were the answers based on the questions themselves and from the context. Um, so, and I've taught you to do that in the class and luckily I'm quite sure I got them correct. But, uh, but definitely I found the equipment a little bit distracting at the beginning. So otherwise the listening was okay. Um, so uh, most of the questions, so one word only, maybe most, maybe all, okay. Um, Part one was uh, registering, or uh, actually not even registering, but background information. Okay, so it was a girl talking with a guy. The girl was looking to go camping with her friends, and she was talking to a man who knows about uh, campgrounds. It was like an information line about campgrounds in Australia, and she was um, asking about... Um, uh, some information about different campgrounds and then one specific campground and you had to figure out, you know, what to do with the registration, where to put the money uh, and those kinds of things. Um, and then part two 
Um, I have these written down somewhere. I don't quite remember them off the top of my head anymore, but uh, part two was uh, online shopping product review. If I remember correctly, or that might have been part three. And then, yeah, part two, yeah, part two was um, a group project. And project members' uh, responsibilities. Okay, so that was part two. If you're if you're curious about the specific points, um, so it was a group project, project members' responsibilities, uh, which again is not surprising. Part three was online shopping product review for different online stores. And part four was um, different types of dangers for Australian agriculture. Okay, so talking about different kinds of diseases uh, and uh, fungus and so forth, which affect different types of crops in Australia and how they manage those and what kinds of damage it causes. So. It was something about that, okay? So those were the topics. Uh, Chubby, the drag and drop I thought was fairly easy. Uh, you really had to uh, pay attention to paraphrasing. So for all of the drag and drop questions, the trick was to catch the paraphrasing between um, what is said in the audio and the choices. Okay, so the choices were rarely what you heard. Actually, I think maybe never what you actually heard in the audio. It was some kind of a synonym of that information. Okay, so uh, what Chavi's asking about is uh, like, for example, with um, the um, part three, the online shopping product review for different online stores. There was a drag and drop question where they had the name of the store. Um, I don't remember the names, but it was like, let's just call them Panda, uh, Red Tag, uh, and um, uh, Silver Star, okay? There were, I think, six of them. Okay, and then here, um, their selling points. It was like selling points. And then uh, they had choices like fast service, uh, cheap price, uh, product quality. Okay, so they had several choices. And then you had to basically um, grab it with your cursor and then drag it and drop it into a space that was provided for you. Okay, now when they were talking about these selling points, they never actually said these words. So um, they would say something like, well, um, if you want the product delivered to your home quickly, a lot of the... Uh, uh, the people in the survey claim that Silver Star is the right choice. So you had to realize that having it delivered to your home quickly was fast service. And then um, they would say another one like, although they didn't have the best quality of products, they certainly had the most competitive um, pricing on the market. And then you realize that, okay, that was cheap price. So it was all paraphrased. So you really had to just listen, see the paraphrasing, and then um, and then match it up. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so that was that's kind of the drag and drop. It's all paraphrasing, and you definitely have to just really pay attention to that paraphrasing in those sections. All right. Okay. So. Hopefully that answers your question, Chabi. All right, I'll look at some more questions here. Uh, just give me a moment. Let me go back to the top. I want to be fair. Okay, so Carolina started by asking, how was the exam? Did I have to wear a face mask? Yes, 
had to wear a face mask throughout the exam. Okay. So Nico is asking within the computer-based test and paper-based test, which one do you recommend as a good one? Um, I, it's a good question, um, Nico. I found the computer-based tests uh, quite good, I guess, to say it in a simple way. Uh, I really like that I don't have to worry about my penmanship, so uh, the way that my writing looks. I'm really used to writing on computer these days, so I'm more used to seeing text on the computer uh, than um, my own writing on paper. So I would say that uh, using the computer, I'm faster and more accurate with my writing, and I even process information better. So I believe that for people who are using the computer proficiently, uh, it's usually the better choice these days. And I think that's why British Council is also going towards that. Um, as well, the computer-based exam, Nico, uh, you get the marks faster because it's faster marking. Now, as I found out, it might be a little bit more subjective. I'll talk more about that, and you'll see more about that in later classes because the writing score for me is a little bit questionable. Um, so I'm uh, quite curious about how they score or mark the writing. I was a bit surprised how fast they were able to produce results for uh, the writing. I mean, the reading, listening, of course, that's simple because there's just a given answer and that's it. But writing, which is more subjective, I think should take a little bit of extra effort to mark, but we'll see. Okay, so I'll talk more about that later on. Um, so, uh, I think from my experience, the writing section might be marked a little bit more fairly in the paper-based than the computer-based exam. I have a feeling that for the computer-based exam, the first step that they do when they mark the writing is they just drop it into a piece of software that looks at grammar and spelling, which is... Mm, arguable, especially at the higher levels, because spelling and grammar becomes more subjective when you're writing a band eight, band nine essay. Anyway, so there are definitely ups and downs, Nico, to both paper and computer. If I had to choose, I would choose a computer. Okay, so I would choose the computer based. All right, I think computer based is more user friendly uh, for the candidate than the paper based if it's available. Okay. All right. Uh, make sure you practice uh, whichever one you're going to do. Okay. So if you're going to do the paper based, practice doing the paper based. Okay. If you're uh, going to do the computer based, practice doing the computer based. That's really important. Okay. So um, my personal opinion, uh, computer based exam is more, uh, let's call it user friendly than the paper based. Importantly, whichever uh, format you are taking, make sure to practice at home with that format. So if you're going to do the computer-based, don't just do paper-based practice exams at home. Uh, definitely do computer-based practice exams, and they exist on our websites, and they exist uh, online as well, so make sure you do that, okay? All right. Um, me here is asking, in the reading section, uh, I'm going five to nine minutes over an hour with almost 85 to 90% accuracy. What should be the strategy to complete it? in the ideal time with optimal results? Wow, me here, very specific question. Um, so, but it's good, it's a good question. Uh, just keep practicing. You're so close to being within that one hour time limit that as long as you uh, keep practicing, then uh, you will, I believe, make up that extra 10 minutes that you're going over, okay? Uh, importantly, me here, make sure to stick to strategy. All right, uh, and I discovered this from doing the exam. I really just followed strategy. So what I'm teaching you in class, and I think it worked really well um, based on the score that I got, so uh, is exactly what I did, okay? I read the title, I thought about it for about half a minute, 
Then I read the questions that are included in the passage. So I didn't read true, false, not given. I didn't read multiple choice uh, answers. And then I read the whole passage uh, nice and smooth. I visualized it. I kept thinking, you know, what is this paragraph about? What is this paragraph about? And then I answered the questions and I was able to answer a lot of them without searching the passage. And then a couple of them, I had to look back to the passage, but I knew exactly where I was looking. And that was the key to really finishing on time and being confident. Okay. So let me make a note of that for you here. Me here. Hopefully that gives you some useful advice. So uh, read the passage so that you understand it at least 70%. Okay. So that when you are answering the questions and you need to uh, look or scan the passage uh, for the answer, you know where the information is. instead of skimming the whole passage. Okay, so that's what's really important to me here. That can save you that time when you're looking with purpose, okay? So let me simplify this paragraph that I just wrote for you there. So uh, look for information with purpose instead of just searching aimlessly. Does, does that make sense, uh, what I'm saying here? I know it's a little bit, um, it's a, maybe a little bit confusing, but does it make sense? So definitely read the whole passage, okay? Definitely read the whole passage. If you're going for a high band, like a band eight, band nine, uh, seven, five, uh, read the whole passage, okay? I uh, realized doing the exam, so I was looking at this as well, that just skimming and scanning for answers is virtually impossible, okay? It's virtually impossible. So um, you have to read the passage so that when you see a question, then you're not like, uh, but you know, okay, that's coming from that paragraph. It's exactly there, and you can just see it with purpose so that you're just basically reviewing the sentence quickly rather than searching for it, okay? So that's what you should practice me here, and then you'll be faster. Okay, Chabi, I answered that question. It was a QWERTY keyboard layout. Uh, Rashika's asking, can we use present perfect tense to explain all pastime activities without using a timeline such as yesterday or only for the past activity that results in the effect to the present time? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, Rashika. I think I have an idea. Um, can you use present perfect without um, giving um, a more specific time frame? Yes, you can. So, um, So I can write a sentence like this, Rashika. I have been an avid pianist for a while now. It really means that who knows when in the past I started to play the piano. I love playing it. I play it all the time and I'm still playing the piano and I will probably play the piano in the future. Um, so I have been an avid pianist for a while now. I can use it um, like that or I can write, uh, I have been an avid pianist uh, since the age of five. Okay. So giving a more specific time frame as well. I've been an avid pianist since the age of five. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but, um, present perfect is quite dynamic, uh, when it comes to, um, the time span or the time frame, because, uh, we use present perfect Rashika to emphasize our experience change over time repetition over time, um, expectation uh, over time, or experience over time, and those are more important than the time itself in many cases.
Okay, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. All right. Hi, Anna. Okay. Um, so Carolina is saying, some candidates told me that they got lost in the listening because of the question order displayed on the screen. Yeah, that's a good one, Carolina. A good question. So uh, this is going back to the exam. Okay. Um, yes, so the listening section also is testing your reading speed and comprehension. Uh, and even your memory store, so even your short-term working memory. Okay. Um, why do I say that, Carolina? I definitely found that in the listening section, you do have to review the questions and you do have to create a visual image and store the information in your head so that you can uh, catch the information as it's given because you you know what's coming. So what kind of information is coming? I'll give you an example in a second so you can uh, understand that clearer. Okay, so to get high bands, uh, you have to review the section questions in advance, visualize them, and keep a store of what to expect. Okay, so um, as I mentioned uh, in listening, uh, the first one, Carolina, was the campground information. And uh, when this girl called the uh, information center for the campground, um, she was first asking about the different campgrounds in Australia. Then she was asking about one specific campground in Australia. Then she was asking about the specific services within that campground in Australia. And it was really important to keep kind of a log of this uh, general to specific information that she was looking for because the answers come in order, but they are a little bit random in that um, the speaker will give the answer earlier for one of the questions and then they will repeat it again later. So you can catch the early version of the answer or the late version of the answer, but you have to catch one of them. And the only way to really be clear that, okay, that was given twice, um, was when you know what kind of a question is coming later on, okay? And that definitely takes practice. So this is why I always tell students that you have to keep your mind in English in the 24 hours leading up to your exam, that will help you with this kind of thinking. If you're speaking um, Arabic, Hindi, Punjabi, Spanish uh, in the minutes leading up to your exam, it's very difficult for your brain to get into that depth of language where it can hold information in working memory. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so one of the important points, Carolina, for the listening to keep this information dynamic that you're hearing, that you're seeing, is to have your brain in English for the 24 hours leading up to your exam. That can really help a lot. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, so when you're in your exam, when you go to your test, use English, speak only English. If you're talking with somebody on the phone, Talk to them in English. Ask them to talk to you in English if they can. Uh, talk to your family in English and try to avoid any uh, of the local language. Okay? So, um, but yeah, Carolina, you can get lost. Um, and especially, Carolina, in part uh, two and three and four, like where you have drag and drop or matching information in the listening, um, yeah, you have to kind of organize the information in your head as you're hearing it. That's where note taking uh, can be useful as well. Okay, so writing down some notes on the paper. Okay, Alpha is asking, sir, how to spot interesting details or specific details um, for the paragraphs in task? Uh, one. 
Okay, Alpha, the way to do that is to uh, not just get lost in details like least and most, but look at the overall patterns. Okay, so look at the bigger pictures. Look at big to small. So what's the biggest pattern that you can see? What's the medium pattern? So don't just get lost in numbers and words that you see on the graphs, but look at the actual uh, image. So look at the bars, uh, look at the contrasts, okay? Uh, look at proportions. So don't just look at like big and small, but look at five times as big, uh, three times as small, half the size a quarter the size. So um, look at proportions, not just uh, absolute differences, okay? It's different for different graphs, different for different charts, but think outside the box. So don't just think of most and least, okay? So Sega is asking if a word is written with um, hyphenation, like up to date, is it counted as one word? Yes. Okay. So the way word count works, and you can see the word count um, in the computer-based exam when you're in the writing section, it shows you the word count at the bottom. So it shows you how many words you have written. Okay. Um, so uh, up to date, if I highlight this, like that, um, then uh, this is just one word, okay? Let's get it, it's just one word. So words are separated by spaces. So even, uh, you probably don't see it there, but it's telling me at the bottom that this is one word in the word count. And I'll use the same word count, especially in uh, the, um, computer-based exam as Microsoft Office does, okay? So when you have hyphenation, it's one word. When you have a space, then it's, an, it's uh, the next word. So I stay up to date on current affairs, okay? Um, so this is one word, the I. Stay is another word. Up to date, this is one word. On is one word, current is one word, affairs is one word, the period is not a word, okay? Uh, period is after the last letter directly, it's linked to the word affairs, so it's still just one word with affairs, okay? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six words. Punctuation is not a word, okay? Um, when you have this type of hyphenated word, uh, then it's still just one word. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, Chabi's asking, do you hear other candidates typing and clicking? <laughs> Very good question. You're full of great questions, uh, Chabi. That's another really good question. So um, are other candidates distracting? Um, yes, <laughs> they can be, <laughs> okay, is the honest answer here. Um, so yes, they can be. Uh, you don't really hear them, well, I, I, I guess you would kind of do hear them typing, uh, but it's not the typing I found that was slightly awkward, um, but the size of pain, okay? <laughs> so, um, therefore, ignore the uh, size of pain and disappointment. I was, I, honestly, I was really empathetic for the other candidates that were in the exam with me. So um, during especially the reading section and the writing section, the listening section, everybody's very focused, okay? So um, listening, everybody's very focused because they're listening. Uh, but during their reading and writing, you can definitely hear P 
people um, fidget and sigh uh, because of uh, stress. Okay, uh, you have to ignore this. Okay, so your job is your job. Stay calm, stay focused, ignore it. You'll definitely hear people going like, <sighs> like you'll hear hundreds of those during the, during the uh, the reading and the uh, writing parts of the exam. Um, just just ignore it. Just really just shut it out. Zone in on the screen. Zone in on your own thoughts, on your own visualizations and learn to shut out that kind of distraction because it can be a negative impact on your thinking, okay? Yeah, uphill saying every, every section should be practiced with a mob. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. I mean, uphill's sharing a good idea here. You should uh, practice your IELTS exam in um, situations where it's not perfectly quiet, but where you have some background noise distractions, not music, but other people maybe talking or distracting uh, that you can kind of practice to shut out while you're focused, okay? So that's a good, that's a good tip, uphill. So um, it is a good idea to do a couple of practice exams in a coffee shop. I mean, that's gonna be tough right now with COVID, of course, um, shop or some like a public park. where there are some um, peripheral uh, sounds that you have to shut out. Okay, so that's a good idea. Um, yeah, Carolina says TOEFL is even worse because you actually hear the other candidates speaking uh, during the speaking section. Yeah, because that's all computer done. You're right, Carolina. And they're um, being recorded on the computer as they're giving their answers. And that can be really distracting. So uh, that's one of the reasons, Carolina, that um, people prefer IELTS over TOEFL. TOEFL is a less valid test because of that speaking section. So uh, yeah, I agree with you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Prashita is saying, so in the writing section, after finishing writing and reading the essay, is it okay to cut words and make corrections uh, in the pen paper based exam? It's not only okay, Prashita, but it's a good idea. So definitely, okay, just like in the paper, uh, in the computer based, in the paper based, that's a little bit more difficult because you have to, you know, do one strike through, write the correct word above. So, uh, you know, you want to write in such a way, Prashita, that you're leaving space above your letters for correcting, okay? So, um, Prashita, definitely review your essays and make corrections in both uh, paper and computer-based uh, versions of the test. Okay, yeah, definitely, definitely, Prashita. You can catch some mistakes. Um, I think that's one part I could have done better. I actually went to the washroom during the writing section. It was a three-hour exam, so I had to. Um, and I think that took away a little bit of use. I took about five minutes to go to the washroom and come back. And um, the building that I did my exam in, the washroom was on the main floor, and the exam was on the fourth floor. So it really took a lot of time to go to the washroom because I had to go out. Of course, a person goes with you. You get chaperoned. They don't go into the bathroom with you, but they take you all the way to the bathroom door. Uh, I wanted to get this experience as well for my students in the computer-based exam. Like, how does it feel to go to the bathroom? So you put up your hand. You cannot go to the bathroom during the listening section, and you cannot go to the bathroom in the last 10 minutes of the reading or writing sections. So I went to the bathroom at the beginning of the writing section, and I put up my hand. Along came an invigilator. They escorted me to the washroom. 
and then I went in and used it, but I had to go down an elevator and up an elevator, which took an extra two, three minutes, and that was valuable time, and I think I could have used that time to review my essay a bit more so that I could have gotten a better score, okay? So um, careful with that. I definitely think the writing section is the best place to sacrifice time if you need to go to the washroom. I don't think it's a good idea to sacrifice it during the reading section, but up to you, okay? If you need to go, go. It's better to go to the bathroom. I mean, I had to go, <laughs> and it's better to go to the bathroom and then uh, complete the exam comfortably than uh, to hold it in because that's a distraction, okay? So not going to the bathroom, holding it in, that can be really distracting. So I don't recommend doing that. You will probably lose more score or more marks that way, okay? So that's a little bit about the bathroom break. All right. Okay. All right, everyone. So I think I'm going to stop there with the uh, bathroom break uh, strategy for now. Um, and uh, I'm sure you have lots more questions. We will have some HD videos coming out on this um, IELTS uh, Band 9 journey uh, exam um, adventure of mine. Uh, so you will be able to see those in a series. And of course, we're producing them. They have to go through editing and all kinds of uh, post-production. But you will see them on the channel. So make sure you check them out. And I will include lots of tips and strategies in those videos as well, okay? All right, uh, members, thank you so much for uh, all of your questions. Again, if I didn't get to all of them, uh, don't worry, you can always send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. And uh, of course, you can find a lot of answers on our websites, on our forums, and on our blogs for academic IELTS, aehelp.com, for general IELTS, gielshelp.com. Um, and uh, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access for all of our viewers, so definitely worth it. You're very welcome, Prashita, Jainil, Anna. Um, nice to have so many of you in the class. And hang around. Uh, we will do a speaking part three example and practice coming up in about 40 minutes. Everybody will be able to uh, join that chat, so hang around. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Central Europe for now. Hopefully, I will see you all very soon. Bye for now.